and clean these all up. Now, yes, we have to do that to some extent now, but right now we only have to worry about, say, the top 10 and making sure that they're all right. And it's really easy to glance at them manually and see, okay, this... Mr. This Lorenz, is, if you will please suspend. I have a issue from the... I have a hand up over here. Yes, from the, from the interpreting... I'm still, are, you, are you going to ask... Will, you, are you, will the speaker yield for a question? Yes. Okay, the, the, Mr. Lorenz, this is coming out of your debate time. You give your name and ask the question by way of the chair. My name is Joe Van Ekren. Um, yes, this I face am, the audience and sorry. speak to the chair and address your questions by way of the chair. That is, you speak to the audience and you say, "Mr. Chairman," and ask your question. Okay, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my question is: as a computer programmer and data analyst of many, many years, I'm aware that this sort of data normalization does need to be done in order for the results to be tallied. You have to determine. Okay, my question is, in 2002, in 2002... Now, Ms. Ms. Yeah, this is debate. You, you did not get to the point. You, this, the, the member will yield the floor and Mr. Lawrence will right. resume. I'm sorry. You do have to ask the question in a short form. I'm sorry. Okay. Oh, here's you your need, badge. Yeah, give you back your badge. Okay. As I said, it's, we have to clean up the data even before we can use EPH. There are hundreds, if not thousands, of items that we have to do this for. Right now, we only have to do the very top of it because we, can, we know for certain that the no, eventual nominees will always come up from near the top of the, the count. We have a system here that's going to throw away nominations because it, they may have more points but not as many people nominating them. This is going to include, this is going to expand the time needed. I spent roughly 100 hours between uh, cleaning up the data now to get to what we had this year. My estimate is going to add another 50 hours of work. And I say that as somebody has, who has done that this year. I have direct experience. We have data, the data that was used for this test was for more than 30 years ago with a much, much smaller number of nominations. I know that even as recently as 2006, the last time I handled nom the Hugos, the numbers then were one quarter of the nominations we received this year and a much less of a variety of sources. Everybody is looking at the, the web pages now for stories and, and, and articles. They're looking at uh, many more cable channels for TV shows. This is an extremely complicated task. This system will make it much more complicated. And in the end, the only thing that's going to uh, have to yield to, for this is making a shorter time for voters to consider the final ballot because it's going to move out the uh, announcement of the final nominees. Looking for a speech in favor of the proposal, and I have been bad about collecting the wings, so I'm going to go to the front to you. Yes, uh, you, Dot, maybe you need to come to the microphone, speak your name, say your name, say your name and get a, a stat, uh, say what your proposal is. Michael Lee, uh, Mr. Chairman, I would like to move to amend to add that this proposal shall be subject to re-ratification by the twenty. 2022 business meeting and the re-ratification vote shall be automatically on the 2022 business meeting agenda. Just a minute while the secretary gets all that down. If you'd like. Yes, if you can bring it up in writing to the secretary, it would help. This, would t this is a motion to add a sunset clause for t to, that it requires automatic uh, rat re-ratification in 2022. Is there a second? second? This is a debatable motion. It has five minutes of debate time that eats up the debate time on the main motion. Once the secretary has it, and we can read, read it back. It's just a sentence. I don't, I'm, yeah, I'm could, uh, could the secretary reread re -read the uh, amendment? Oh, is that what you want? What, what, you, what you got as the proposal amendment? Well, what I, what I wrote was um, an amendment to that this proposal be subject to automatic re-ratification in 2022. And that, okay, oh yeah, with a, there's a provisio on the end you'll have to get as well. But it, it would require that the business meeting also schedule it, although that's not part, that's a provision. Okay. Uh, all right. Five minutes of debate. Speaker in favor. 
part of this is, yes, I think there are a lot of complexities with this, and the only way, I think, to do it, because I think there is some urgency to get something in place, um, is to try something. And if it doesn't work, then we'll know and have it scheduled again to try something else. Um, and I, but I think this, this provides that uh, in a quick fashion. A speech against, yes. A, the mem okay, the member will, okay, parliamentary inquiry, the member will come to the microphone, say your name, and state your parliamentary inquiry. Yes. David Wallace, and my question of the chair is simply, does the language of this proposal, in fact, accomplish what the member has stated is the intention? Of, uh, of, of postpone or, or of, of causing the automatic re ratification. Yes, that's standard. The, the, okay, sorry. The question was Does the motion, as stated, put a sunset clause that requires automatic re ratification if the business meeting takes no action on it, it would sunset? That is what it does. It is the same language we have been recently using for other sunset clauses. Speech against the amend, uh, yes, uh, speech against the proposed amendment. Well, Mr. Come to the, come to the process, the member, Mr. Quinn. Yes, uh, Jameson Quinn. Um, my inquiry is: uh, is, the, is there a way, as the as one of the co-authors the, of the proposal, to accept this as a friendly amendment? There is. Well, okay. So the question Under, was: Is the, uh, can the? Let me finish. I know you all want to shout out and show your knowledge. Not everybody has your level of knowledge. This is an important issue. There is no such thing as a friendly amendment. Once a proposal is on the floor, it does not belong to you. It belongs to the assembly. That's what I'm just, so you are speaking, in, you would be speaking in favor of it, I think. Therefore, you do not have the floor, if you yield the floor. A speech against the sunset clause. Okay, I'm sorry about that, Mr. Quinn. There, you, since nobody wants to speak against it, is there any objection to ending the debate? That, 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 you, okay. <laughs> Very well, I will need to do. The chair would like to remind members once again that when the chairman says, if there is no objection, or is there any objection, the way you did say that you have no objection is to say nothing. If anybody says anything, the chair is likely to interpret it as an objection and slow you down by voting. Very well. Let me try this once so you understand. Is there any objection to ending the debate at this time? Very good. Is there any objection to amending the motion by adding the sunset clause? Hearing no objection, the motion is amended to add the sunset clause. Very good. Okay. Before we re resume the debate, I want to get a reset on how much debate time remains in favor of the proposal and against it. Here, Microphone. There, there is about eight minutes um, affirmative remaining and about 11 negative. All right. Um, in speaker in favor of E Pluribus Hugo. Um, over here. Yes, okay. Yeah, all the way to the far end, yes. And I apologize if I don't always give your names. Sometimes, even those of you I've known for years, your name is going to go out of my head. It has been a long convention. Jack Foy. Jack Foy. Um, I, I'd like to make two statements uh, with re respect to uh, Mr. Lorenz's uh, commentary, Mr. Chairman. Um, the first is that um, he's outlining a very clear need on the part of our, uh, of our very hardworking administrative staff for better tooling support around how we run the Hugos. And I, I think his point is very well considered uh, about the amount of manual labor that would currently be required in order to implement E Pluribus Hugo. That being said, I think that we as fandom have resources in order to improve that experience for our administrators, and we should do so. Um, the, the second is that in spite of the, uh, the, the complexity in, in explaining how it works, um, uh, I, I actually sat down and wrote it in an hour. 
um, it, it is actually not very hard to code with respect to the actual algorithm being uh, being presented. Um, so I, 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 uh, I think that's my point. Thank you. Um, against, uh, yes, against EPH. Thomas Monaghan. If the object of this is to get the people to vote and it be equal votes and everybody to understand, they should write something simple like one ballot, one nominee per category, and then everybody's vote would be equal, slate or not. This is just a different way of manip manipulating votes and it's complicated and it's no way to get new voters in to vote for the Hugos. It is just a way so the people on the inn can stay on the inn and they can understand what's happening while new voters see this thing that is v rather complicated and they say, why bother? That's all. Well, many people in favor. Uh, I'm really actually trying to pick people who have not had opportunities to speak in debate for a while. Uh, sir. Or to, uh, opportunities to speak in debate or not at all, for that matter. Yes. Thank you, Chair. My name is Ramez Nam. I'm an author. I, was not, I did not have any eligible works this year. I would like to point out two things. One is that those who wish to slate vote uh, face a very low bar, and as the speaker uh, presenting this articulated, uh, at some point in the future, some party, whether the current parties or others, will decide to push a slate, and they can exploit the current vulnerability again. And while last night the no award was handed out and no members of the slate succeeded, I'd like to point out that there were roughly 20 authors whose works would have appeared on the ballot that would have given boosts in many cases to the careers of very young authors early in their career uh, that's quite valuable and might have given them a chance to win. So a few examples of authors and works that were not on the ballot and could have been. Uh, Nancy Kress, Yesterday's Kin, uh, a novella, The Regular by Ken Liu, Pat Rothfuss, Well Loved, The Slow Regard of Silent Things, Robert Jackson Bennett, City of Stairs, an author early in his career, uh, Mary Rickert, Rachel Swirsky, uh, Ashante Wilson, uh, the list goes on and on, Ursula Vernon with the Jackalope Wives, Aliette de Boudard, uh, Yuji Foster, Max Gladstone. There's a very large number of authors who we would have had the opportunity to vote for, and even had they not won, could say Hugo nominated uh, for the rest of their careers. And I think they deserve a, a system, and fandom deserves a system, that allows them to get on the ballot formally. Thank you very much. Excuse me, sir, can I get the spelling of your name? Mr. Buff, speaking against the proposal. Warren Buff, I'd like to elaborate on something that Mr. Monahan was saying, that this is a, a going to be a problem for new voters. We've heard arguments back and forth several times about whether or not this encourages bullet voting. Uh, it's very clear that whether it actually benefits bullet voting, it appears that it would benefit bullet voting, and thus a partially informed voter would nominate in bullet fashion. If nominating in bullet fashion appears to be encouraged by the system, but in fact is less effective, then the voters who have been fooled in this manner have been disenfranchised. And I believe that that is a serious flaw for the system. Uh, in favor, okay, we'll go back to, okay, um, hmm, yes, right, I gotta remember the folks in the front row can't stand up. Um, yeah, what do you think? Hang on a moment. Yes, that's a good point. I cannot see you at all when he is sitting here because his hat is blocking the view. So I, I, will, recogn I will recognize you. I apologize. Come on on here. Yes. It's not his fault. Gotcha. Thank you. 
Wendy Gelmater, in favor? No, no. It's, it um, I like the fact that if this had happened this year, the rabbit take, puppies take the would not have... Ma'am, ma ma take the microphone out of the stand and hold it up to your mouth. Okay, good. I like, how's that? Yes. yes. The fact that had this happened, the rabbit puppies... You need to start at the beginning with your name, ma'am. ...would not have uh, hijacked the sad puppies. I am a sad puppy, not a rabbit puppy, and I'm in favor of this. I'm also not a Doctor Who fan. <laughs> Could you once again tell us what your name was because you couldn't be heard? Wendy Dalmeter. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. That was a speech in favor. We got lots of people who want to talk. Uh, Miss, was that in favor? Oh, sorry, against. Against. Sorry. Uh, next is in, is against. Right. Uh, Miss Hayes. No, she was in favor of the motion. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So this is an against. Yes. Okay. One of the re one, Lisa Hayes, one of the repeated statements was to stop a slate. I want to make it very clear that this body may be a slate itself and find author A, B, C, the ones they really, really want to have on the ballot. And I do not want to see that year come up and as Mr. A, Mrs. B, and Mrs. C be taken off the ballot because we all happen to like them. In favor, let's see now. Uh, it's really tough because there are so many of you. You know, Mr. Rett, who has been trying from the very beginning. Joe Rett. Um, Joe Ritt speaking. A um, couple things that. Joe. Sorry. Show, watch. I, I know how to use a mic. No, you don't, Mr. Ratt. If you don't I, I use the mic. I can hear my voice clearly. No, Mr. Ratt. Mr. Ratt. A moment, please. Mr. Ratt, if you do not follow instructions, I will ask you to yield the floor. Put it to your mouth. It's a directional Wait, mic. I'm holding it to my mouth. You have a recognition. Turn to the audience and give your speech. You're recognized for not. For okay. It's all right. Get so I've been following this and tracking this and doing a lot of math with it. One of the complaints that uh, spoke up, a lot of people are speaking to, is people won't understand this. So since I do understand it, I was curious about this, and I took this underway to find some people who didn't understand the voting. And we did some tests. Three of us did tests with several people who did not know how voting works. And in every case, it took longer to explain instant runoff voting to them that is currently used in site selection than it did for them to understand this. Because you have to understand instant runoff voting to understand this. Most people don't understand instant runoff voting and still vote and use it. This is not actually going to stop most people from voting. Also, manual verification will be slow. Manual verification is always slow, but it is absolutely possible. You can manually do this process. So both of those are, you know, not actually concerns. And it doesn't take, once we had explained instant runoff voting, no person took more than three minutes to understand how E Pluribus Hugo would work. Thank you. Uh, in favor of the mo no, was that was that in favor? That was in favor. Yeah. Boy, it was really hard for me to tell, honestly. Okay. <laughs> Against Mr. Todd Dashoff. Mr. Chairman. Oh, I'm uh, sorry, before you let me recognize you, we need to uh, uh, the the meeting is in recess for one minute. <laughs>